Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, shalom. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, what a privilege to spend some time with you this morning. It's Tuesday, it is our uh, live broadcast with Kingdom Disciples Network. And uh, yeah, it's a new day, it's a day that God has made. A day that we will rejoice and be glad in it. And I am really excited. So yes, Shalom, Salamat Siang to all my Indonesian friends. God bless you. Um, yes, it's a privilege. We live in a time where we really, really need God. A time where we really, really need to know the truth of God. Amen. So I'm excited this morning. You know, we're all going through some difficulties. Shalom, Malapis, Goeiemore, Goeiemore, Natasha, More, Maisie, Gaan het goed vir more. Yes, Natasha, we pray for you. I know that you're going to hospital today. Leona, you are back from Cape Town. Praise God for that. And all is good. Pastor Marius, Goeiemore, Goeiemore, Doc Marius and all the Kingdom Disciples Network Pastors. God bless you. God bless you. I'm really excited about this morning's word. And I want to encourage you. This is, this is the time, my friends, where we need to press in, press through. Doesn't matter what the enemy brings. Tolly Goeiemore, doesn't matter what the enemy brings. The fact is, you know, we will overcome. Amen. So let's start. I want to pray and then we start uh, this morning with the word of God. Amen. Father, I thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, just saturate us. Just as the plants need the water from above, we need more of you, Holy Spirit. Just rain and bring a fresh anointing, a fresh revelation. Just the freshness of your existence and your presence inside of us. Every breath we just breathe, Lord, is just to know and understand that you've created us and we have purpose. And Holy Spirit, just come, use us as vessels to manifest the glory of God in our lives. And therefore, we honor you this morning. It's a privilege, Lord. we full of joy and excited. Doesn't matter what the enemy brings. Father, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sharon, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, my wife. So, uh, this is not yet my preaching, but Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says the following, the second, the B part. And be not grieved. I want to tell you this morning, be not grieved grieved and depressed i want you to shake off that snake just shake it off of the lies of the devil and tell it to go there's no place for grievance in the child of god there's no place for depression in the child of god it's time to shake it off it's time to shake off the lies of the devil for the joy of the lord is your strength and your stronghold that's the joy where you will what, what does a stronghold mean? It means some place where you feel safe. Doesn't matter how, how big the war, doesn't matter what happened. But the fact is, depression, you will not get to my stronghold. You will not get to the place of my strength because my joy is in the Lord. And I just want to, this is not what I will preach today, but this is just to encourage you this morning. I'm telling you, it's time to stand up in that stronghold and just start to worship God. Just start to praise Him just where you are. And you will feel the shackles will just break off and you will feel the, the prison doors will just open in Jesus' name. So today my message is, I won't break or be destroyed. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. I won't break. Devil, I won't break. Devil, I tell you today, I will not break. I will not break or be destroyed. I want you to tell whatever the enemy has tell you. Maybe it's finance this morning. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's relationship. I want you to tell that devil this morning in that stronghold where the joy of the Lord is your strength. I want you to tell the devil, I will not break 
in Jesus that I will not be destroyed because I serve a living God amen so let's get to the word of God and we see Paul actually find himself in a place where he really in this scripture trying to tell us there's no way out maybe you feel today you've prayed you fasted you've seen God and all you see there's no way out I'm telling you today the devil will not break you my friend the devil will not destroy you because you are an overcomer in Jesus name so every one of us uh, you know at some point in your life has endured hardness real difficult situations and here let's go to the scripture in 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 now Paul is making some statements here that really amplifies you know he's using a lot of words trying to tell you and me one thing you will not break you will not be destroyed because he found himself in a position where he felt all hope is lost let's read the scripture in 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 for we do not want you to be uninformed he, he starts this they said listen we are going through stuff listen don't be uninformed and think serving Christ is just you know you're on a beach and you just enjoy life no it's not no it's not he said for we do not want you to be uninformed brethren about the affliction and oppressing distress which befell us in the province of Asia so first Paul and the, you know, the people with him went through some real difficulty in Asia. The Bible does not stipulate really what Paul went through. But the fact is, he's making this and he said, listen, I want to inform you. We were really in a difficult situation. And then he starts trying to explain to you and me 2,000 years later what he went through. To encourage you this morning that you will not break that you will not be destroyed because you will conquer whatever the enemy brings i mean listen what he says in verse 8 he says how we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself it's like you know it's, it's the last of his words it's like he's really trying to say i've tried everything I'm coming back to really to break it open to you what he actually says in this verse and in verse 9. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. But that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on yourselves instead of on God who raises the dead who can say amen with me who can say hallelujah listen my friend if you are in a situation that you feel you have the sentence of death Jesus through his through his blood and his resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit God can raise you from the dead so Paul is described something here I don't want to get too quick you know to, to some parts but let's break it up Paul went through something amen so if we read the first part in chapter 8 he says for we would not brethren have you ignorant of the trouble which came to us in, in Asia so he's writing to the church of Corinth and saying you know what we really had trouble now this word trouble in the Greek actually is the idea of a heavy pressure situation so when he used the word trouble, he said, listen guys, in Corinthia, we are in a heavy present situation. So at this point, uh, you know, the word was used. Now let me ex explain how the word, what, what Paul was using as a paraphrase here when he used the word trouble. When he says of a heavy present situation. Now how the Greek actually explained this word is if somebody, you know, a, a victim they will tie up a victim and uh, you know with a rope and lay him on his back and then while he was laying on his back a huge heavy boulder a huge rock was l slowly lowered upon him until he was crushed so the word trouble paul is using here he says i feel like that victim 
that the weight of my situation, this heavy pressure situation, is like this rock slowly, slowly crushing me, crushing me. This is what Paul is using the word trouble. He's writing to them and he said, do not be uninformed. This is what we are going through. He said that we are indeed in a very heavy situation. You know, like this man under the boulder, a tight place. A, you know, it's like a squeeze upon him and there's no way out. So Paul is saying we were under a heavy load, an unbelievable heavy amount of stress and pressure. Does it sound like you today? Then this word is for you. I'm telling you, you will not break. I'm telling you, you will not be destroyed. You maybe this morning feel like the ways of this world, the things that <clears throat> the enemy has placed upon your life, the things you have to face, the things you have to go through. It's like pressuring you. You cannot sleep at night. During daytime, your mind never switches off. Nighttime never switches off. It's like this pressure and you just see no way out. A heavy burden that you carry. And this is what he's saying. So he says it's this heavy under a huge amount of stress and pressure. He said we were in a very tight circumstance. Our minds were being squeezed. It felt like our lives were being pushed right out of us. If this is for you, if this is how you feel, Paul said, I went through that. Paul said, you will not break. Paul said, you will not be destroyed. Even today, this moment, you feel you cannot handle this anymore. Let's carry on. So, you know, you can think, oh, well, maybe that's physical suffering. But of course, physical suffering is difficult. You know, but the greatest suffering of all always occurs in the mind, the mental suffering. You know, when you have pain, you can maybe take something. But when you are mentally suffering, you know, a person can live with pain and his body, if his mind is still in control. However, when the suffering begins to work on that person's mind, both his body and his mind could eventually break and fall. Amen. So Paul... Greatest suffering was not physical. Where they describe here, he was in this mental distress under a heavy burden that pressed down on them. He says that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. He said, you know, it feels like we're going to die. It feels like we cannot go on. So that phrase that we were pressed out of measure in the Greek, it literally means to throw beyond, to excel, to exceed, or to go beyond anything normal or expected. Maybe I'm talking to you today, you in a situation beyond anything that you've experienced, beyond anything that's normal or expected, but yet you're a child of the Most High. Yet you are precious to God. But yet you find yourself in this heavy burden situation like Paul is describing. It also describes something that is excessive and behind, beyond the normal range of what most would experience. So what was Paul saying? We were under an amount of pressure that is not normal. And you know what this COVID-19 and what it did on the finance and families and situations Many people, what they experience is a mental pressure and heavy burden upon them and they don't know how to get out. It is far beyond anything we mean, you know, us, we ever experienced in our lives. Paul says it's excessive, unbelievable, unbearable and far too much for one human being to endure. So Paul goes on. Tell us that this pressure was above strength. Can you see how Paul describes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 8, 9? He's really trying to tell us, listen, you don't know what we, what pressure we're under. Listen, you don't know what we are going through. And I know that people listening this morning, you are going through things that is unmeasurable. You do not have the answer. Amen. But I'm telling you, maybe you feel like Paul and said, it's above my strength. I want to tell you, you will not break. 
I'm telling you, nor will you be destroyed because we serve the living God. Let's go on. So he said, this word above actually conveys the idea of something excessive. It's just like Paul is playing with words. He doesn't get just one phrase to explain the amount of pressure he's under or what they experience in Asia. He's using this thing to describe and this thing to describe and this thing. He actually put words upon words, phrase upon phrase, actually telling us this is really a very difficult situation. Amen. So Paul used all of this to explain how bad this situation was. He's really piling up on this words on top of words, trying to accurately portray what he was going through. It's like Paul is saying normal human strength never would have been sufficient for this situation. Maybe that's where you are. Maybe you are at the end of your human strength. The strength it required was far, far beyond human strength. This predicament required strength in a measure he had, you know, he had ever previously needed. It was beyond me. This is what Paul says. He said, in so much that we despaired even our lives. He just carries on trying to explain and capture the mental thing they went through. And the word despair actually is the word exaporoimiamai, that is the word exasperated, meaning in a technical sense, there's no way out. Are you feeling today there's no way out? Are you feeling, I just cannot, with all the things happening around, I just cannot. I'm telling you this morning, hear the word of God, you will not break, nor will you be destroyed, because there's a God that loves you, there's a God that's in control, even the human strength is withering, it's exasperated, yet there's a God that is in control, amen. So we, it describes this, you know, people who feel trapped, caught up against the wall or pinned down, utterly hopeless it's like we will say today it looks like this is the end of the road for you if there's someone feeling this today i know that people that commit suicide come to a place like this it's just there's no way out martin good morning there's just no way out they feel it's utterly hopeless they feel like paul is describing in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He goes on in verse 9, but we had the sentence of death ourselves. Now the word sentence actually speaks, it's a final verdict. There's no way out. Death is upon us. This is how they felt Paul in Asia. And that's why they write to the Corinthians and explaining the mental oppression they are going through. It literally speaks of a final verdict. Paul says it looked like to us the verdict was in and we are not going to survive this. Maybe this is what you feel today. It's like your situation. You look, you've got maybe no job. You've lost everything. And you just say, I don't know. Maybe life is just not, not anymore. I cannot handle it. You see, Paul was suffering at with a mental situation he was suffering a mental agony a measure that few of us have ever experienced and all of these words if we put what paul was actually telling us in first, second corinthians chapter uh, uh, verse 1 verse 8 and 9 it will sound something like this we would not brethren have you ignorant of the horrible tight life-threatening squeeze that came to us in asia it was unbelievable. With all the things that we have been through, this was the worst of all. Paul, you were stunned to death. How you can say that a mental agony is more worse than being stunned to death? Because this is what Paul saying. It felt like our lives were being crushed. It was so difficult that I didn't know what to do. Maybe you don't know what to do. I'm telling you, I've got a word for you. You will not break. And you will not be destroyed. Because Paul is writing to us today that we can be encouraged in a place where we feel we cannot do anything. 
No experience I've ever been through required so much of me. In fact, I didn't have enough strength to cope with it. This is what Paul is saying. To an end of this ordeal, I was so overwhelmed what I didn't think would ever get out. I felt suffocated, trapped and pinned against the wall. I really thought it was the end of the road for us. As far as we were concerned, the verdict was in and the verdict said death. But, real, but really, this was not... No great shock because we were already feeling the effect of death and depression in our souls. I want to encourage you. I know there's people there that feeling already the effect of death and depression in their souls. But Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, like I've said, there's a stronghold. The joy of the Lord is that stronghold against depression. Is that stronghold against the lies of the devil. More my mouth. So Paul doesn't exactly tell us what happened to him. But one thing, he went through a difficult time. And he wanted to know, you know, telling us, endures hardness. You know, we just have to go through that. And sometimes we will have that. Amen. You see, Paul, even with all his knowledge, revelation, experience, he was still assaulted by the devil. Doesn't matter how much you know, doesn't matter how close your relationship with God, doesn't matter how good you built on the blueprint God is for your life, the enemy will always attack you. He will always try to bring you to a place of depression, a place of no way out, so that your mouth keeps shut and the joy that's supposed to go out, the more tougher the situation is, what happens? We start to become quiet. Because the more the oppression presses down on us, we start losing our faith. We start losing our position in Christ. And it squeezes us. Where God said the answer is, the joy of the Lord is your stronghold. Even when it comes, just start to worship. Amen. So Paul, was, Paul says that assault was so aggressive, we despaired even our lives. He said this intense emotions he felt as he went through in this difficult circumstances. But the good news is Paul didn't break. So you will not break. Paul didn't die. You will not die in whatever you are going through this mental situation. Amen. I'm telling you, it's not a time to break. It's not a time to be, to, to be destroyed by the works of the devil. You will have the victory, my friend. You will be able to say that this ordeal happened in order that you would not trust in yourself. Because the latter part in verse 9, Paul comes and he said, you know what? So that I do not trust in myself, but I trust in God who raises the dead. Meaning your death situation you are facing, this mental no way out pressing. Paul is saying, do not trust yourself, but rely on God. Put your trust in Him. He will deliver you even unto from death. Amen. So God's delivering power this morning is yours. He has rescued you in the past. He will rescue you now. He will rescue you again and again in the future until God decides. Your time is up. All that God says is you stay put. Even with all of these things you are going through, this pressure. You know, you will not break. I'm telling you, you will not break. I'm telling you, you will not be destroyed. Because God will bring you through this. Amen. Doesn't matter that the, the, you know, the temptation to give up, to give in. But make a choice to never give up. Don't allow to give up to depression. Don't allow to give up whatever enemy is bringing to your mind. Don't allow the devil to rule your life through depression. Steal your joy and start the fruit of the Spirit start decaying in your life. Because that's His plan. Yes, you will go through some time, through some difficulties. But I'm telling you today, you will not break in Jesus' name. You will not be destroyed. God says, I am in control. Amen. 
if you are faithful and slug it out, staying in that, with the power and the armor of God, you'll discover that God will be with you all the way through the, the situation. I just want to encourage you today with this word. Paul went through a real difficult situation. And I know there are people listening today. You are strong on the outside, but the inside you don't sleep. You struggle. You know what is actually amazing? Indonesia is five hours ahead of South Africa. It meaning when it's 12 o'clock in South Africa, it's five o'clock in Indonesia. And yeah, usually I, my time is I wake five o'clock and I start my time with God and preparing when it's 12 o'clock your time. But when it comes to six o'clock, seven o'clock here, two or three o'clock, I'm just surprised how many people are awake during two or three o'clock in the morning, suffering, maybe from mental agony because of a squeeze that the enemy has placed on them. Maybe things that are going through sickness, finance, relationship, I can name it, worthlessness, life. But I want to tell you this morning, you will not break because there's a God that loves you. You will not be destroyed. But God said, you stand firm, put on the armor of God. Believe in me, I'm coming back to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in, lean upon, and have confidence with all your heart and mind in God. Not on your own understanding. And He will make way. He will make straight your path. But I want to encourage you today. I want to say, just hang in there. You can make it. Just think about Job. He lost everything in one day. His children. All his prosperity. Everything. He found him from being wealthy, sitting on the outside of the city, scraping the saws with a, with a piece of pot, pottery. Can you imagine the mental agony, the question, how did I find myself here? But yet, even he went through that, he stayed firm. When his wife says, just curse God and die, he said the following, why would I only receive the good from God and not the bad? You see, Job understood through the hardship that it's not just goodness that comes to us, but sometimes bad, but God is in control. Even he sat there with all of these questions. How about tomorrow? He put his trust on God. And then came the time when he started praying for his friends. Suddenly everything changed. When his view changed from him to there, things changed. I really want to encourage you today. Just hang in there. Don't quit. Don't be moved. Hang in there because God will bring you through this. I just want to conclude again with Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Listen again. And be not grieved and depressed. You know what is amazing? That's the attack of the enemy. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. And I want to encourage you. The way out is start to worship and find your joy in God amidst your situation. Like Job said, why will I only receive the good from God but not the bad? And I want to encourage you today. Listen, my friend. you in a position that you've never found yourself in. Your, your faith is being stretched to the limit. Like Paul said, it's humanly not impossible or not possible anymore to endure this. But yet, God gave him strength. Whatever they were facing mentally in Asia. And in so many words, Paul tried to describe what he went through. So you and I, whatever you are going through, doesn't matter how much in your language it says and describes the mental agony. Yet, he said, God brought us through. We did not break. 
and we will not destroy. I would like to pray for you. Father, I thank you this morning for the word. How we need this word in time this morning. How we need to hear we will not break. Even amidst the darkest hole, the situations we are in. Even amidst the depressed situations the world is in. Whatever we face that's inhuman to handle. Yet through Paul this morning you said, Paul just saying, hang in there. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? It's like Paul is saying, what mental agony you are going through, you will not break. You will not be destroyed. And therefore, Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, just minister right now to everybody. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our stronghold. This is where we stay in this mental situation until it passes. Because we put our faith and trust in God Himself, our confidence with all our mind and all our heart, we place on God, not on our own understanding. Because we cannot understand, we cannot grasp why we are in this. But one thing we know, God is in control. Father, therefore we thank You, we thank You, Lord Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, just, just touch everyone right now. Whatever they are going through, just touch Him, changing the atmosphere. Bring glory and joy in that situation. Encourage them. But don't let them quit. Because they will not break. And they will not be destroyed. In Jesus mighty name. I just pray God. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. In Jesus name. Whatever the sickness. Whatever the diagnosis. In Jesus' name, I pray that mentally they will be strong. They will not give up. They will hang in there. Waiting expectantly for the miracle to come. For God to intervene. And Father, just strengthen them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 May you have an amazing Tuesday. Just know that God loves you. You are special. And maybe there's no words to describe what you are going through. But I'm telling you this morning, Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you this morning, the Holy Spirit is there with you. You're not alone. Even the devil tells you. But I want to say something. You will not break. You will not be destroyed. Because there's a living God. Just trust Him. God bless you. Send this to somebody. Bless somebody. Maybe it can save a life. Maybe somebody that's going through things they do not understand. Just share that. Because you can make a difference in somebody else's life. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for who God in your life is. And just worship Him. Worship Him. Don't allow the mental oppression. And even if you cannot, God will let you through. Because I know there's many testimonies out there. How God led you through some difficulties. Recently. Things that you didn't understand. But yet you came through. And you became more better. When there was no answers. Yet God helped you. And you can testify today. The greatness and His glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Thank you for, for just enjoying the Word of God. Just enjoying the life we have and share in Christ Jesus. Love you.